Hey guys, I'm back again with another uh, quick little video. I figured I'd do something because uh, it's been forever. I keep promising that I'm going to get a little more consistent with it and I never can because I have a crazy busy schedule. It's very inconsistent between work and all the other things on the go. Um, but I figured I would do a quick little video. I don't think I've showed the sled yet on the channel, but now that it's the end of the sledding season here up in Northwestern Ontario, um, I figured I'd do a little year-end video um, and kind of tell you the things I like and don't like about the new 2023, or not new anymore, the 24s are out, but the 2023 Yamaha Sidewinder. Uh, I got the XTX SE um, and I'll kind of go through it and point out the things I noticed and don't uh, liked and didn't like um, compared to the sleds I had before. If any of you followed the channel for a while, you would have known that I had a Summit before and I had a Polaris uh, SKS at one point in time, then I ended up switching just recently to the four stroke. Um, and it's definitely different and there's lots of good and some bad, I guess. Um, but I'll kind of get into that in a minute here. So here's the sled uh, that I'm talking about. It is a 2023 Yamaha Sidewinder XTX SE. Um, it's obviously got the four stroke turbo, the 998cc uh, triple. Um, it is completely different from all the other sleds I've had. Um, well, obviously being a four stroke, um, I've never had a newer Articat style sled, which I guess this would fall under. Um, being made by Articat and then just have the Yamaha name and motor. Um, now, as far as sleds go, I've never been happier. Best sled I've probably ever owned. Um, and I've had lots, like in the last few years, I've had four new ones. So out of all the things, um, the number one thing that I'm happiest with is definitely ride quality. Um, I had a Summit before, I had a Polaris SKS, I've had Renegades, um, I had an old Articat ZR back in the day too. Um, I've drove tons of sleds, as you can see, there's Indies, there's an old Apex back there. Uh, well, I'm not old, it's only a 20. 14 or 15 but um, I drove pretty much every kind of sled and this is definitely the best driving sled I've ever had in the sense that it's a pretty good crossover sled for what I do um, I spend most of the time on the trails but there is times where I'm breaking trail into cabins or going across the swamp playing around in fields um, and it did great at that um, even took it into some gravel pits and climbed a couple hills with it and played around. We didn't have much snow this year, so it's kind of hard to put it right to the ultimate test, but I'm very satisfied with everything. Um, I really can't complain. It's, as far as what I do for trail riding, um, there's lots of 90 mile runs and stuff, and it, it's comfortable. It doesn't have power steering, like I mentioned. Um, I don't think you need it, really. I mean, unless you're going for hundreds of miles over the course of a weekend or something you might get a little sore after a while but even then i didn't i'm young i guess i'm not 60 or anything but um i'm not super super happy with the ride it's got uh the fox shocks that i'll show you here in a second um and then it's just an articat uh chassis obviously um and there's definitely nothing i would change about it so as i mentioned it's got the fox shocks um, they were come set up just like this from the factory. Um, this is how, or from the dealership, I guess. I rode it just like this. There was no adjustment needed. Um, same thing. It's got the Fox shock back here. Um, and everything was smooth. It was, it took all the bumps, bottoms out on the hardest bumps, which I believe is supposed to happen. But other than that, it made the ride super super nice and smooth a lot of the places that i ride um, around here like up in northwestern ontario because we have so many lakes you cross tons of them you run 20 30 miles down lakes sometimes when you're going certain places um, so you end up getting lots of drifts big bumps out in the middle of the lake on the trail lots of the lakes aren't groomed around here they groom to and from them but they don't actually go across the trails on the lake just because groomers are heavy and they're worried about losing them through the ice plus some of the lakes are way too long to cross so they just have a groomer at each end um and 
for the most part, you can go as fast as you want across the lake and it'll, it'll take everything. I've hammered this thing down the lake at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, I guess, and had no issues whatsoever. Just hang on and go. It really comes down to the rider because the sled can outperform myself for sure. Like it's, it takes more abuse and goes through more than I can put on it and more than I'd put on myself. So definitely happy with that. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the Yamaha Sidewinder, obviously XTX um, SE. So it comes with the 146 by two inch, uh, with two inch paddles. A um, little bit aggressive for trail riding, but not too extreme. I had two and a half on my summit and that was a bit much. Um, but it definitely helps when you get into the deeper stuff, when you get into the swamps, um, the fields, the big drifts and stuff. Gives you all the extra track that you need. I wouldn't want any longer for around here. Um, I mean, a shorter track would be a little bit better for trail riding, but as a crossover for the, kind of get the best of both worlds with the longer track and the two inch paddle. Um, only got stuck twice and both of them were my fault. <laughs> uh, one was in a gravel pit and I let off and got stuck halfway up a hill. And then the other time I, kind of laid it down on its side in the deep snow and lost all my momentum and then it just trenched right down to the lake I was in the drift end of one of the big lakes around here and it's just too much snow and but getting it out simple you just get it back up so it's kind of sitting level and rock it back and forth and give it the throttle and walk straight out of everything I didn't have to get anybody to pull skis didn't do any digging it just come right out no problem which I'm super happy with because one thing you notice about this sled being a four stroke, like everybody talks about Yamaha's or boat anchors and stuff, it's heavy. Um, I wouldn't say it's too heavy. Like it's not like I got that apex sitting over there. That's heavy. That thing is a three man job. If you get it stuck and you want to lift it and kind of move it over. Um, the Sidewinder, not at all like that. Uh, you definitely notice the weight, but Luckily, the uh, sled comes with more than enough power to make up for it. Um, I don't really know power numbers. I've seen anywhere between 180 and 220, and I would say it's probably somewhere in the middle. I have had quite a few sleds around the 180 mark, and it's definitely got more power than that. Um, but 220, I don't think so. I think that would be a little much. Um, it definitely will lift the skis in the snow no problem as flies down the lake you can get some pretty wicked top speeds with it even with the big 146 two inch track um, you got more power than you really need if you're just doing day-to-day -day trail riding or even going through playing some deep snow um, you just got to keep in mind that it is a little heavier and it does take a little bit more um, out of you to ride but that's really not that big of a deal because like i said the power makes up for it um and you definitely don't need more i know some guys tune them and stuff and i probably will eventually because i don't leave anything stock or alone but um pretty solid uh right out of the factory right out of the box performance anyway i couldn't uh, complain i've got a couple thousand miles on it now issue free absolutely not a problem um i wish i had some riding clips i don't have any way to record while i'm out riding like i don't have a gopro or anything i could get somebody to record i guess if i'm out but i don't really think of that in the moment um but hopefully next year hopefully next year i can get something like that um now one thing i find is the sled gets hot um quicker than any other sled that i've had as far like obviously it makes sense but it will overheat if you just idle it too long um driving it down to get from my house to the lake where all the trails go from you got to run a kilometer or so of like down the side of the road or down a sidewalk or whatever there's really not much ditch to get into um just because of people's yards and everything now most of the time it's fine but there has been a couple of times like we're in a lower snow uh, part of the year now there's still snow to get around but roads are bare sidewalks are bare 
dark spots on trails are starting to open up. So you notice it, but luckily it came with scratchers, so I don't really worry too much about it. It throws a little bit extra snow up there. It keeps the sliders cool. Um, but it is one thing to keep in mind if you ride a lot of low snow conditions, you kind of have to watch that. And uh, from what I've heard, anytime anybody tunes anything, it makes it even worse. Um, I've never tuned one, so I have no idea, but I'm assuming that makes that is the case. Um, now I know lots of guys cut vents in their side panels um, on both the clutch side and the uh, exhaust side, just because in the middle of the, like if you're driving at night, you can see the turbo glowing underneath the side panel. Um, and a good portion of the exhaust will glow nice and red. Um, so it's hot, it's running hot for sure, it gets hot. And that's, from what I've read, normal. Um, hard to believe they actually last getting that hot, but I guess they've obviously thought of that. Um, now there's really not much storage on it. Like I have, I have this bag, comes with it, but then the tunnel, there's nothing. There's no way to mount anything on there. Um, a couple of my friends run link bracket uh, accessories. You can just get link brackets from uh, Hurricane Performance, I think, makes a good one, and there's a few others. Um, so I'm going to look into that because I have gas cans and bags from having the summit, so I'm going to do that. I probably need some tunnel bracing because Articat has uh, issues with bending tunnels from what I've seen lots on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. So I'm going to brace it up a little bit, put that on. Um, I need new scratchers. That time that I got stuck in the gravel pit going up the hill and I let off. Um, the scratchers ended up falling off the side of the rails just because they're wore out. And I ended up backing up, not thinking, not even noticing. I didn't even know they were down. And bent them a little bit, which I can show you in a second here. And they're good for nothing now. So I gotta buy new ones, but they're only a hundred and something dollars anyway. Um, and that actually leads me into the last thing that I'm gonna have to say is maintenance on these things is cheap, easy, quick, simple. There's really, you do uh, oil changes. You don't have to be buying jugs of oil. You buy like, I know when I was driving my Skidoo at Summit, I was going through just about a whole tank of oil or a jug of oil every time I went for a ride, which was about a tank of gas. And at almost a hundred dollars, um, a jug in Canada, that was getting ridiculous. Now I've done one oil change. Uh, the second one's coming up, I guess. If I get any more riding in, I'll probably have to do it before the end of the year. Uh, I think the break in one was 800 miles. And then I think the next one's 2,500 or something like that. It's in the manual anyway. Um, just do oil change filter and then it's quick, it's easy. Um, Parts are cheap. Belts are like $110 or low 100s or something anyway. They're not that expensive compared to like 330 for the Summit belt. Um, same with Polaris belts, I assume are fairly expensive if you're actually running a name brand one. But I could be wrong, I've never really looked into one. I don't run either one of these Polaris really ever. Um, and oil changes are cheap, filters are cheap. Um, they're not the easiest thing to do just because for whatever reason, there's really no way to drain the oil out. I don't know if they expect you to suck the oil out, um, but the low point oil drain has no exterior access from what I've found. Like if you crawl underneath it, there's not a little panel you can pull off and there's no way you can get anything underneath it inside through the side panels. So I don't know, but it's, I just, take it to a dealership and get them to do it. It's quick and easy and they know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, anything that I might've missed, um, you can shoot me a comment or a message on here or even on Instagram um, and I'd happily answer it. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I fuel, it is not as good on fuel as people think. People equate four strokes with unbelievable fuel mileage not the case um it's not terrible but it's not the 200 miles to a tank you see some people 
saying that they get no problem. Um, it's I've done 110 miles, I think, one time with it on one tank of fuel. Um, and that was left me with about less than a quarter of a tank anyway it had probably like an eighth maybe an eighth of a tank um it was low enough to the point where when i was coming home before i got home the gas light came on um now i was on a hill so that obviously makes sense a little bit but i was still driving it up the hill so it's not like i was parked it on the hill it was just driving home and the gas light come on and then it stayed on till i got home um and that was 110 or 120 miles which is good for the most part i mean there's really around here there's nowhere that you can go further than that without having a gas station along the way um but yeah it's not not great from what i've heard that closed loop tuning um if you guys get that done improves it quite a bit like 30 to 50 percent better from what i've seen and heard from well not not only online but from friends so that might be something worth looking into. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you guys have any more questions about it or anything else, um, we can, I'll feel free to ask and I'll answer it on uh, wherever you ask me. Have a good day.